Okay, for that function, question A is find all critical numbers. Included zero. Here I have to exclude zero. Uh, <coughs> oh, okay. So for for this case, you have at, at zero you have negative one, right? For this one at zero you have negative one. Now, if you plug in zero, what do you get here? Zero. Zero and four, right? Okay. So, for for f of zero, f of zero is zero because we're following this prescription. But uh, here's a here's a question: Is this graph continuous? No, it's not. It's not continuous. Because if you plug in 0 here, you get 0. If you plug in 0 here, you get 4. So it's not continuous. So although, if you plug in 0 here and 0 there, it seems like they, they match. So the left derivative and the right derivative seems to match. There's a critical problem with this function when you try to find the derivative at 0. What is it? It is a jump discontinuity. If if the if the function has a, a jump discontinuity, or if the function is not continuous, is it differentiable at that point? No. If a function is not continuous, it's not differentiable. So from that we can conclude actually two things. One is uh, one is uh, this is equal to zero. at x equals to negative one half. And because negative one half is less than zero, we, we do see that f prime of negative one half should be evaluated using this, which is equal to zero. So that is one of the critical numbers. Negative one half is one of the critical numbers. But also at x equal to zero, f prime is undefined, or I guess the better way to say it is uh, f prime does not exist. Not differential. So these are the critical numbers. So answer at negative one half. It's a critical number because f prime is equal to zero. At zero, it's a critical number because uh, because uh, f prime does not exist. Now, b, you have to use the first derivative test to figure out the nature of the extreme on here. At negative one half, at zero. Um, actually, the first derivative test should be used only for continuous case, 
when uh, when the graph has job discontinuity, you actually need to look at the graph to figure out if it's a relative minimum or not. So uh, we can only apply the first derivative test for negative one half. Let's do that. Before negative one half, there is negative one. Right after negative one half, let's say negative one fourth. We can't pick zero because that's the place where f prime doesn't exist. So for these two values, let's plug it into f prime to see what we get. If I if x is negative one, what do you get? Negative two times negative one is positive two. Two minus one gives you positive one. If x is negative one fourth, negative two times negative one fourth is positive one half minus one. That's uh, negative one half. So it's negative. Okay. So y prime is positive and negative. What does that mean for y? It's increasing and decreasing. Therefore, at x equal to negative one half, what do you have? You have relative max. Max. Now, just out of curiosity, what happens if you plug in one into f prime? Negative one, because x is one is greater than zero, so you have to use this prescription. So it's negative. So it's decreasing and then decreasing again. Now, however, that, that doesn't fully do justice to what's happening at zero. What's really happening is you have a graph that's like y equals to negative x squared minus x. That graph has it's like this if you took some time to draw it. And 4 minus x is like, uh, like this. Okay. So the graph is like this. Uh, and the full circle is here and open circle is there. Okay. And, and, and once you know the graph, then, then you see that this point, uh, this point here is uh, lower than all its, its neighbors. At zero, it's, it's less than the left side, right? And it's less than the right side, if you just pick some values slightly more than before. So for that case, uh, although the first derivative test says, oh, it's decreasing and then decreasing again, so it must not be in your relative extrema, but uh, the first derivative test is only true for continuous graph. So if you actually draw the graph, you see that this point is actually a relative minimum. 